As you have just heard, the Delta variant is now a real threat, which is testing the capacity of even the strongest public health system in our region. Delta's higher transmissibility means cluster of cases are quickly leading to bigger outbreaks, especially in the high risk setting known as the three C's, closed space, crowded places, and close contact settings. We are also seeing more clusters in the families. Once the virus enters the household, more family members are quickly becoming infected. And this is the reason why government in the regions are taking strong and early action through lockdowns and other measures to limit transmission and avoid putting more pressure on already stretched health services. Every country needs to continue doing all that it can to control the viruses, carefully assessing and managing the risk in each context. It is especially important for countries which still have a few or no cases to remain vigilant. We have seen how quickly Delta can spread once it gets in and how hard it is to stop. However, even with all our best efforts, it now seems clear that globally, the virus will not disappear, at least not in the near future. And while the virus is spreading anywhere, every country remains at risk. With this in mind, we see a couple of plausible scenarios for the future. The first scenario is where our action allow us to live with the virus. We reduce the risk it poses by making the best use of vaccination and other prevention measures and respond to flare ups where they occur with short targeted measures. This does not mean giving up on controlling the virus, but it's more like how we manage seasonal influenza and other vaccine preventable diseases. We focus on trying to limit spread, protecting the most vulnerable, and doing so reduce the health and broader social impact of outbreak. The second scenario is where other more dangerous variants are able to evolve. Variants that spread even more easily, cause more severe diseases, or are resistant to existing vaccine. I'm sure you agree that this scenario and all of the associated health, social, and economic costs is the one we don't want it, and we want it to avoid if possible. And the best way we can do this is by doing everything we can to limit the transmission now. Like other viruses, the more people are infected, the more the virus will cause COVID-19 can evolve. Which of these two scenarios becomes reality depends on which individual and collective actions we choose to take in the weeks and months ahead. So it is in our power to shape the course that the pandemic takes next. Getting priority populations, especially health workers and older people, and then whole communities, Vaccinated as quickly as possible is crucial, but equally critical is continuing with the personal protective behaviors and public health measures that reduce transmission. Using these tools in combination is the key to limiting spread and the virus ability to mutate into more dangerous variants. I know that it's hard to keep asking people to comply with the restrictions, and to keep asking government to apply them when resources are stretched and people are tired. I totally understand because I am also tired of all of these too. I want to be able to travel again. I want to see my elderly parents and for my daughters to see their friends. But at this critical point in the pandemic, it is up to all of us to stay the course and do all we can to avoid the second future scenario. For individuals, this means continuing to wear masks and avoid closed spaces 
crowded places and close contact setting. And of course, getting vaccinated as soon as it becomes your turn. For business and other employers, it means carefully managing and mitigating the risk at the workplace and for health system. It means staying ready for potential surges and maintaining essential services to save lives. And for governments, in addition to rolling out vaccines, it means having the best information to support decision-making and adapting measures based on the local context. It also means taking the right approach to testing with genomic sequence to track the variants and contact tracing to find and stamp out clusters early and taking targeted actions to reach and protect vulnerable groups in high-risk settings. A lot remains uncertain, but at this critical moment in the pandemic, we must continue to make the best decision we can based on our experience, shared learning and reliable data in order to create the future that we want. It is within our power to reduce the threat of the virus, but by making the most of every tool we have to fight it today. Doing this will help us get back to something closer to the life we all want. Just last Friday, I had a video call with a 108 year old woman in rural Cambodia who had just been vaccinated. And she told me that she took the vaccine for herself and to help protect others in her community. Every day I'm inspired and motivated by the tremendous resilience and commitment of people like her from across our region. We have come this far together. So my message to all of you is this, at this critical phase in the pandemic, let's stay the course, working together. We can take control to protect ourselves and each other for the sake of all our futures. Thank you very much.